Hey everyone, bonjour tout le monde. This video today is about the Sigma 56 f1.4 for Micro Four Thirds. In my case, more specifically to Olympus because that's the system I shoot with. Now, while this video is mainly about this lens, I'll dabble into a few comparisons to my 75mm f1.8 since I happen to own both lenses. The 56 is compact, weighs in at 9.88 ounces or 280 grams, and attached to the AM1 Mark III body, the total weight is 878 grams, and that includes the lens hood. Because of the ergonomics of this combo, I find it more comfortable to handhold from the top as opposed to the traditional hand holding position. I just find it gets a little cramped holding a small prime in the traditional position, and it gives me better balance and allows my hand to protect the lens from rain or snow. The lens is weather sealed, but not to the level of an Olympus Pro lens. The lens has rubber sealing at the mount, making it dust and splash resistant. But when I hear the word resistant, better safe than sorry, that's what I say. Here's several lenses alongside the Sigma 56, call it a, an Olympus family shoot, I guess, comparing the size differences. So any prime can be used for a variety of shoots but I find the 56 hits a sweet spot as a solid portrait lens. The bokeh, or the gradual blur separating the subject from the background, is really nice. And let's not forget it's Micro Four Third, so this lens is essentially a 35mm equivalent of a 112 f2.8, which means you can get pretty nice soft background separation. Now with the slower lens, you can still get some background separation from your subject, but you do have to work harder to achieve it. Usually you have to either shoot really close to your subject, or if you're using a multi-focal length lens, you have to zoom to its maximal focal length. Now I know there's bokeh junkies out there with an addiction to hyper-isolating their subjects, and there are times that is a good thing. We appreciate bokeh like those who appreciate a very expensive bottle of wine or a car. But like most things, this is what we want and this is what we need. And I found with Micro Four Thirds you can get very nice bokeh with the lenses that are available on the market today. Having an f1.4 aperture is definitely your friend for low light conditions, gathering more light, and you're also not crossing over into high ISO territory as quickly as you would with a slower lens. And by the way, the focus of this lens is snappy and consistent. Now while I did not do a side-by-side -side comparison with the 75 f1.8, other than the obvious focal distance of the two lenses, well, I found the bokeh was pretty darn close. I'd say the 75 is a tad, and I mean a tad creamier, but to me the bokeh went slightly further away from the subject. The 56 has the feel of the 45 f1.2, and that's a good thing. Like this picture here, I found the bokeh to be soft and pleasing and more 45 millimeter like As for the price between the two lenses, there's a difference. Significant difference. Sigma is $559 Canadian at the time of this video, whereas the 75 is $1,200. Ayoy. So Sigma has weather sealing and comes with a lens hood, whereas the 75, while rugged and very good build quality, is not weather sealed. It also doesn't come with a lens hood. And that Olympus lens hood is pricey at $105 Canadian. But there are third party lens hoods out there. I got mine at B&H made by Velo, I believe. And at the time of this video, I saw one a few days ago on Amazon Canada, made by company name Hauge or something like that. Anyways, H-A-O-G-E for about half the price of the Olympus version. Now there's a 20 millimeter difference between the two lenses and you're probably going to wish you sometimes had more or sometimes had less focal length depending on what you're shooting and, and that's just life shooting with a prime versus a variable focal length lens. But here's something I also considered. Shooting with Claire here last week was very easy as she's natural in front of the camera. But if you're working with people who need a little bit more conversation and guidance during your shoot, at 75, you might feel like you're a little too far from your clients. Having said that, of course, I've seen a lot of wedding photographers use the 70 to 200 as their portrait lens at the long end, so to each his own. And maybe some might prefer the photographer not be so much in their face during a photo shoot, so I get that, especially during the COVID era. So there you go, you can sell to your client that you specialize in social distance photography. Of course, the use of lenses like this might limit their usability in small indoor spaces, unless of course you're doing something like headshots. In this shot, I wanted to include the background, so I took it from across the street. 
So don't get me wrong, I don't consider the focal length negative, but if your main purpose for the 75 is for portraiture indoors, know your space before you buy. So while the 75 and 56 have excellent image quality, if I had to choose between the two, Sigma would be my choice. It has weather sealing, it comes with a lens hood, is much less expensive, and the focal length gives me a little bit more wiggle room indoors while delivering really nice bokeh. The 75 has solid metal construction and amazing optical quality, so you can't go wrong with either. So thank you for being here, and I will see you soon.